So the last two things that I want to chat about are indentation and entry points. I alluded to indentation a little bit earlier when I looked at the recipe example, but it really is one of the foundational concepts when using the tool. Good indenting lets you find information or structure information in a very retrievable way later down the line. So indentation is achieved by just using tabs. So my main thought, main thought here, and if I say tab, it indents it underneath that block. And this block is called the parent block, and this block is called a child block. So this would be a subthought, a sub thought. And I could nest this as many times as I want. Nesting just means I put it underneath that block. So I'm, I'm tabbing there to get another, um, another indentation. And this allows me to build on the thought above. Okay, great. Now, if I enter and enter again, it goes back a level. So this is now another sub thought. So this is now not related to this one over here and it's not related to this first sub thought. It's related to the same parent and it's now a sibling block of this first sub thought. So let me just say uh, my first sub thought. And this allows me to build meaning in like very small packets and also zoom in at different levels. So I could zoom in onto this main thought over here and just work on this like nice blank canvas. Or if I was working on, you know, you could literally have a, a full article outlined like this and then zoom into that point over there and then, you know, right over here. Or I could zoom in over here and then write some information here. And you can see here the crumbs of where that information is sitting and I can go up a level or I can even go back to my journal and all the information is sitting over there where I want it to. This is super powerful. Just an example of why it might be powerful. Say now you have a whole bunch of meetings related to a project. So project meeting one or X and I then could put some information about this meeting. So now a decision that was made and I could just say this was decided. I could say this is a decision. So just showing you it's like a node. Hmm, this is a decision. Okay, let me add that tag. And hypothetically, um, if I go back to my journal, so I just put Alt J there to go to the full journal view, which gives me that infinite scrolling. And then I can go to November 28th. And hypothetically, I had a meeting here. So word project meeting X there we go and then I could say we discussed this now if I go to my project meeting X page to make this make a little bit more sense let me just say project X meeting so it's not project meeting X and I change the page name there do I really want to change the page name yes so now I have these meetings for project X and I can see here on the 29th of November, we had a meeting and this was decided. And on the 28th of November, we had a meeting and this was decided. So that indentation is what allows me to get this information at, the, at my fingertips very quickly. Indentation is also the building block for being able to query your database and search your database effectively later down the line. So something to start practicing as soon as you start working in LogSeq, just building that indentation muscle. The second thing that I wanted to discuss is having good entry points. So I'm a firm believer in having everything in one place, i.e. one database for work, personal, etc. And that's why I don't share my personal database when I'm doing tutorials because I'm having to do a lot of editing on when my personal database is displayed because of the links that are coming up. What is key to success when everything is in one place is to have very good entry points and workflows that you can work around. And that is where having good favorites over here and having mapped out your workflows a little bit better is, is key. So as I said, if there's something that I want to discuss with some, someone, I then add the tag inbox. That is one of my entry points so that I can say, okay, this is like a working space for me to go and think about like what I want to chat to person X about. So there's my inbox mom, but I could have 
inbox or I have inboxes for everyone that I'm working with at the company, other people that I'm chatting to. It's just like a very good entry point for me. It's also key to set this up in a way that you can trust your system to resurface that information later for you. So one of the things that I like to do is to set up tags to remember and I will set that up as a favorite over there because I also forget all the tags that I use sometimes like so there's my tags to remember page and then I'll add that to favorites. I'll add some of the ones there that I use a lot so um, inbox whoopsie inbox reference and and this is almost like the folders approach but now it's just giving me the keywords to go and find that information so so these are the key nodes around which my brain is working theoretically so another thing that i would highly recommend is having a visual representation of your workflow this really helps you to remember the way that you're operating because it sounds strange but like you tend to forget these sort of things later down the line so there are a number of tools out there mural mirror lucid chart but I use something called draw.io, which is now called diagrams.net. Again, open source software. And although this is not ready for sharing just yet, it will hopefully be ready when the video is published. This is showing all my different workflows. So journaling and stream of consciousness. Let me zoom in here. Knowledge management, professional usage, task management, and then content and output. These are all my areas of workflow. And I've got some cues here to help me remember how things are going in and then like being transformed later down the line. Essentially, I'm building a map of my database or a how-to manual of how to use the database and, and be able to resurface information of value later down the line. So I guess the last thing that I would say is just an admission that coming from the hierarchical way of working in folders and files, this does take a little bit of getting used to but when you get there, it really does set you up for success. So I would encourage you to plug away at it and just keep, um, keep entering things into your database and it will always be there for future reference. So you can move things around, as I said, late, as I showed earlier, and eventually build up your knowledge and your, ta and your task management systems into an effective way that will really streamline your approach in personal and hopefully professional life too. I cannot recommend LogSeek highly enough. It's changed the way that I think and yeah, help me really channel my my mind because as my username suggests, one stuttering mind, my mind is everywhere all the time. It's just the function of the ADHD brain. And I'm sure a lot of those people who might identify as ADHD can recognize that. And this is just one way to put everything in one place and sort out the chaos. I really hope this video series has been valuable for you. I'm thinking about doing a proper course in the beginning of 2022. Check the link below and maybe there'll be some progress over there. If you feel like you've benefited from this and maybe you're not the type of person who wants to buy a course, maybe you're the type of person who wants to buy a coffee. So I provided a link to that. It's just a nice way to support the channel and I really do appreciate it. So thank you to those who have bought coffees. You guys are absolute legends. Anyways, I hope to see you around the channel in the future and best of luck with your log journey.